Hi, Jason. David Henry right. here. You're one of the founding members of April Wine, and you're yeah. living where right now? I'm in Toronto. Yeah, I've been here since 86. Uh, what about your products? What are you doing right now? We started the band about um, oh, almost eight years ago, seven or eight years ago, and um, been mainly writing. We do a lot of writing, a lot of rehearsing. We record a lot. Um, we all have uh, you know daytime jobs to go to, so the recording process happens a lot slower than we would like it to. But uh, we're on our we're just about finished our second CD. We did, we did an initial CD, like a demo CD, and some of those tracks are out there. Then we did a, an official CD release about a year and a half ago of, of a CD. with didn't have a title, just the David Hammond Band. And now we're working on the third CD, or second second official CD. Don't have a, a title for it yet. I The, the working title is The Weakest One, because there's a song, a weird song on it called The Weakest One. But we're just about finished this one. Hope Hopefully, we're hoping to have it finished in time for uh, for Juno Week up here in Toronto, so we can you know maybe shop it around a bit. But that's uh, that's that's basically we play a, we play out a bit, not a whole lot. We've been having uh, bass player problems. We haven't got a permanent bass player uh, right now, so we haven't been playing a lot recently. Uh, but as soon as we do get a new bass player, we hope to remedy that and and be out playing uh, around the city of Toronto as often as possible. And we're going to basically show up at every jam and every every open house that we can. You're writing all your new material? I do a lot of writing. I, I've, I've been writing for years. I do a lot of writing. So I'm, I'm always writing. At any given time, I've got, you know, uh, 100 songs that are written and another 100 songs that are being written. That's a lot of songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a busy guy when it comes to songwriting. I'm, I'm a pretty busy fella. With April Wine, also in the past, you wrote the the original songs like you know, Drop Your Guns, Big Hit. Yeah, I wrote uh, Drop Your Guns was a hit for us. Uh, that was the only song that I wrote that was a, that was a hit. Uh, I wrote other songs as well, but they weren't as uh, as commercially viable as uh, as Drop Your Guns. Would there have been uh, unreleased April Wine songs at that era, n not released, with you writing? Not really, no. Um, most of the, all of the stuff that I wrote during that period got released either on a on an album or there was a song called Teacher that was the B-side of Could Have Been Lady. Um, the only things that didn't get released is when the band split up um, the original band split up after the uh, recording of the third album, which was Electric Jewels, and um, uh, there was two songs of mine that were scheduled to be on that CD that were pulled because I was no, long, no longer going to be in the band. Uh, but other than that, and I don't even know where those, there's two or th actually three of them, I think. Uh, I don't even know where those songs are these days. Um, I still play them a little bit. There's one that sort of disappeared called Walking to Frisco. I'd like to get that one back. But but uh, most, yeah, all of the stuff I wrote with April Wine got released. So are you playing on the Electric Jewels album all the way through? No. Uh, no, my brother and I played on, I think, on most of the tracks, or over half of the tracks anyway, but I don't know exactly which tracks we're on and which tracks we aren't on i i can't recall um i know i my memory of that that's quite a few years ago i don't remember which tracks we played on that's one classic album actually electric jewels um yeah really yeah, good, good stuff album. on that yeah do you, do you recall recording back then compared to today like with the mics and all that all the change in everything um, yeah, I mean, really, it's not. That's that's despite the, the, the fact that that's literally 40 years ago, uh, the actual recording process hasn't changed that much. I mean, we basically still use a lot of the same microphones, sure microphones, sure 57s and 58s and so on, and, and more expensive microphones, of course. Um, so that part of the technology hasn't changed that drastically. The recording process has changed completely and totally with with the digital with the digital uh, revolution but uh, but as far as the guy going in to stand in front of a microphone and, and, and sing or play guitar that part of it 
hasn't hasn't changed. There's different ways of doing it these days, of course. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, you might use different technology, but the actual fact of the actual performance of recording isn't that different. Just the just the process, just the um, the processing part has changed dramatically. Back in the old days with April Wine, what type of guitar equipment will you have used, like even effects and amps? Um, we didn't use any effects. Uh, we just plugged straight uh, amplifiers. We used, we plugged into a Bassman, a Fender Bassman head. Uh, both of us, both Miles and I used Fender Bassman uh, heads. Plugged into, uh, each. we each had a couple of trainer PA columns that we plugged into because they had these six eight-inch speakers. Each column had six eight-inch speakers, and we liked those because the speakers would distort easily, and that's where we got our distortion from back then. But we didn't use pedals at all. Uh, just uh, just plugged straight into into the amplifier and did a lot of tweaking. And uh, guitar wise, I remember Miles used a, a used a Gibson Melody Maker. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember what I used back in those days. I I think I had a Stratocaster, a black Stratocaster that gave me a lot of tuning problems. Um, I remember I had an, a Gibson ES335 that I used. And I experimented with a lot of guitars. I experimented with Hagstrom guitars. Uh, I've had a lot of Hagstrom guitars. Wish I still had those ones. Mm. Um, I played some, a couple of Gibsons, I think. Uh, but I think with mostly the mostly the Fender Stratocaster that I had, and then um, and then the Gibson ES335 that I had uh, for a while. So these Fender Bassmans, uh, would it, they have been used in the recordings also in that those years for the first and second album? Uh, I think so. I, I, I believe so. I, I don't recall exactly. I, I don't. I don't know if there was other amplifiers lying around the studio that we used, but I think mostly we we plugged into those those Bassman amplifiers. But boy, that's you're talking to a guy that at best of the times I don't have a great memory, and that's going back almost 40 years. So I. I, I you know, I, I tend to refer to my brother Richie when it comes to memory tricks because he has an almost photographic memory. Uh, it's quite s- s- amazing the, the memory he has. So he's the kind of guy that if you asked him what guitars and what amplifiers we used, we used during that period, he'd have that right in the top of his brain. He'd, he'd tell you right away. <laughs> Do you recall uh, this in the back in the early days? Where would your first gig be with April Wine? No, I don't remember our first. I don't remember our first gig. Um, my brother has uh, in his possession a, a, a spreadsheet with just about every gig that April Wine did during that period. But the very very early days, uh, we were we spent the first four months of our existence. The first yeah, the first four months of our existence were in Nova Scotia, and um, I do know we we did some odd things. We 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 did some theater, some stuff with theater. Uh, we used to put on our own productions at times, uh, you know, just rent a, a, a theater and put on our own show. Um, and, we, of course, I'm sure we did, uh, you know, maybe uh, some high schools. Uh, I don't think we played nightclubs at all. We didn't play bars, I don't recall. Um, and the, But we were only in Nova Scotia for three months, and then we moved to, to Montreal. Or we had it west, and we got as far as Montreal, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, in, in Quebec, we played a lot of, oh boy, theaters and, and hockey rinks and uh, high schools. We played at high schools. During that period, bands played high schools nonstop. I mean, it was, uh, it was a different ball game than it is these days. So we played a lot of schools and high schools and colleges and that kind of thing. Did you remember the band Mash McCann? Because... Uh... Pierre Seneca played on Electric Jewels also, uh, keyboards. you recall that at all? Yeah. We spent a lot of time with Mash McCann. Uh, we became friends with those guys, and we spent a lot of time with them, um, hanging out with them. We did shows with them. Um, and, uh, of course, Jerry Mercer, the drummer for right. Mash McCann, replaced, when my brother left April Wine, um, Jerry Mercer was the guy at, that replaced him. Uh, so yeah, we've and and other bands that evolved from Mash McCann uh, are bands like the Triangle and uh, True. I think one was called True North or Freedom North. There was quite a few different bands that evolved from Mash McCann that were we also uh, also hung out and 
played with and so on. But yeah, Mash McCann, we're, we're, we, we became really close friends with those guys. We spent a lot of time partying with them and doing shows with them. What did you do after April Wine? Continue writing songs? Um, I, I've been, since April Wine, I've been in just a, a succession of bands. Um, the first band was a band called Silver, which is a little trio of my own that uh, lasted for about a year and a half or two years. And then there was a band called The Dudes, uh, All the Young Dudes, uh, with uh, people like Bob Segarini and, and Brian Greenway, who's now the guitar player in April Wine. Right. Uh, that band lasted a couple of years. We had an album on, uh, on Columbia. Um, after All the Young Dudes, I formed a punk band, a sort of a punk rock band in Montreal called The Debutantes, and we had a, a spectacular six-year run in Montreal that was uh, <laughs> was pretty, we were a pretty heavy party band. We had a lot of fun, came very close to recording an album, at a, at a, uh, but that band had a, sort of a tragic end when the bass player uh, had a, a very tragic car accident. Um, but that was a that was a fun band, and and then after that, I uh, I moved to uh, Toronto, and I was in the been in quite a few bands here in Toronto until I finally realized that I needed to start my own band, which is about seven or eight years ago. And your uh, I see it on your uh, website. You you work with uh, Eddie Cromwell from Digby County. Nova Scotia. Yes, yes, that's my drummer. Uh, Eddie and I, I've had uh, been working with Eddie now for. Uh, uh, he's been with me now for about oh, like five or six years, and Eddie is uh, just an amazing, uh, amazing drummer, an amazing musician, amazing singer, um, and uh, a really, <laughs> really amazing guy. So he, he and I are pretty, pretty, pretty close. We're we're kind of the core of the David Henman band. Uh, at least we are until we find that third guy until we find a, a new bass player. We've got a, other people that work with us, guitar players, singers, percussion, and so on and so forth, but basically the David Hammond band is a core trio. Seeing future gigs in the, with this lineup, like uh, little tours, mini tours, or... Hopefully, yeah. I mean, uh, we're trying to, trying to put the horse before the cart and make sure that we've got some good product that's recorded, some good recorded product, um, so that's the main thing we're focusing on. But once we get some good, some good recorded product out there, and 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 if we can create a demand uh, for the band, um, then yeah, we hope to we hope to to be out playing. I mean, our 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 goal is you know is to do this full time. But we also have a dream, which is to tour Europe. Okay. Um, whether that will ever happen, who knows? But that's what that's what the dream is is to is to someday tour Europe. Would you say the internet uh, is going to be a debt machine to help you? Um, I would think so. That's the way business is done these days, is on the internet. So hopefully that will be uh, that will be uh, a, a, a big thing for us. <laughs> you worked also with Canadian Music Magazine. That was years ago. I uh, when I moved here to Toronto in '86, uh, I was here for a couple of years, and I ended up being the uh, the editor of uh, Canadian Musician Magazine and, and uh, the, that, that publishing company. We, we, we did other products as well. We had Canadian Music Trade and Professional Sound. Those are trade magazines. And we did, uh, you know, programs for the Juno Awards and the Maurice Jazz Festival and the Toronto Rock Awards and so on. I did a lot of writing. I was a journalist during that period, and I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of interviews as well. I interviewed a lot of famous people. My, my first ever interview was, was uh, with Leonard Cohen, and that was pretty unforgettable. Was it a good one? Amazing. Well, it couldn't, it couldn't, couldn't help but be a, a good interview when you're talking to Leonard Cohen. He's, a, he's an extremely eloquent uh, human being. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think it's possible for him to give a bad interview. <laughs> you, you just let him do all the work. He's he's totally brilliant. So I'm sure that opened a lot of doors also to to see how different musicians look at things. Oh, it did. It did. It was a it was a great learning experience. Uh, I interviewed some some great uh, some great people. Um, everybody from uh, Joe Satriani to Sammy Hagar to. Uh, Brian Adams and Colin James and Kim Mitchell and David Wilcox and uh, see, I can't remember who else. 
I interviewed I interviewed uh oh, geez, I'm trying to think of some of the guys. I interviewed the guy the lead singer in, in A C D C can't think of his name. Brian I interviewed, Johnson? I interviewed Hen- yeah, and uh, Henry Rollins. I interviewed Henry Henry Rollins a couple times. Dwight Yoakam is a fascinating person to talk to. Uh Tommy Lee from Motley Crue. Um maybe the less said about him the better. <laughs> not not a <laughs> the less said about him the not better. One of, yeah, he's just not one of the not one of the sharpest knives in the drawer that I've interviewed. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure he's a fun guy, though. So, how many hours do you put on the internet to uh, pump up your product nowadays? Um, I don't really. I'm not really uh, promoting my music uh, a lot, uh, quite honestly. Um, I'm hoping to find somebody that will do that for me. I I just don't have the time. I I I'm a I'm a player. I'm a, I'm a singer and a writer and a player, and I I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time promoting my music. Uh, so uh, once we've got some music to promote, um, I hope to find somebody that will believe in me enough to 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 uh, want to do that. Well, David Hedman, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Okay, Jason, my pleasure. Actually, I'm uh, to, uh, appreciate you calling and and uh, taking an interest in me. Good stuff. Sounds good, Jason. Thanks again. Okay. Well, you have a good night. All right. All, all the best, man. All the best. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.